Zero Accounting Software 2023 Short Term Investment Sale and Gains. Get ready to become an accountant hero with Zero 2023. Here we are in our custom Zero homepage. Going into the company file we set up in a prior presentation, that being Get Great Guitars. Duplicating some tabs to put reports in like we do every time. Right click in the tab up top so we can duplicate it. Right click in the duplicated tab for another duplication of the tab. Going back to the tab to the middle as the one to the right is thinking. Accounting drop down. We want the balance sheet. Then we're going to tab to the right. Accounting drop down. This time instead of the income statement, I have that custom report we made last time, which is a comparative income statement allowing us to see the two months of operations thus far as we do the data input, that being January, February, and the change. If you don't have that, you could just open the normal income statement and that's fine. Back to the tab to the left. And let's change the date range. Drop down, customize 2023. End of, I'm just gonna go to the end of the year 2023 and update it. All right, so we are continuing on with the second month of operations. We're gonna continue with a few transactions that are not like normal in that they're not basically the day-to-day -day type of transactions. Last time we did a loan payment. This time we wanna take a look at the short-term investments that we put on the books in the prior month and we want to first just mention the different kind of complexities that happen with short-term investments for example investments and in stocks and bonds first off note that if this is our business and we sell inventory and or do guitar lessons that investing in stocks and bonds is not the primary goal of this business. It's not what we do to generate revenue. And therefore, we wouldn't normally put our personal investments in our business bookkeeping. We might have another zero accounting software to track our personal side of things, for example. So that's the first thing to note. What happens when you make a lot of money in the business and you got money in the checking account? Well, then you might want to invest it, but typically, for accounting purposes, you would take it out of the business in the form of a draw, right? Equity goes down, cash goes down, and then personally invest it in stocks and bonds and possibly track it on your personal bookkeeping side of things, possibly using zero to do that. Now, if you have short-term uh, investments within the business, meaning you have excess cash, you're gonna use that cash in the business, but you wanna put it somewhere else for now to pull in some some dividends and interest hopefully uh, as you're sitting on the cash before you spend it that's when you might park it into like stocks bonds or uh, you know cash mutual you know some kind of uh, savings accounts or something like that right so we're going to imagine this is in stocks and bonds for a short term time period but when we start to value the investments you have a similar concept whether you're talking about your business books or your personal books and that is that the short-term investments will have income hopefully related to it in the form of interest which typically is going to happen if you are invested in bonds in the form of dividends which will typically happen if you're invested in stocks and hopefully capital gains because the value of your stocks for example will go up in value and then you might have capital gains however you don't actually realize those gains until you sell the stock, which adds its own level of complexities. Now also note that when you're investing in uh, stocks and bonds, uh, it's common that you might not invest in individual stocks and bonds, but in mutual funds using tools of mutual funds or ETFs or something like that to invest in the stocks and bonds. And you might have multiple mutual funds that you are investing in. Notice that on your zero accounting balance sheet, you probably do not want to list out every individual stock, uh, maybe not every individual mutual fund or ETF, possibly only breaking out by investment institution, such as you know a Vanguard or uh, or your bank, your Bank of America or whatever the institution is, E Trade that you are investing in. You might want to list the actual uh, investments and that's one way you might want to break them out. And then when you want to look at the more detail of the investments, you look at other software or you go to the actual platforms themselves that you're invested in 
to get the detail of the of the performance of the particular portfolios uh, that you are in otherwise you're going to make a lot of work for yourself in the accounting software because it's not really designed here to give you that detailed analysis it's designed here to give you the kind of overall uh, big picture of the balance sheet is how I would uh, typically think of it. The other way you might want to break it out is you might be able to break out between bonds versus stocks. However, that will be difficult if you're investing in mutual funds, which have a mix of stocks and bonds. You also, if you're on the personal side of things, might want to break out between short-term investments, possibly those that are not under the umbrella of some type of retirement account like a 401k or IRA and long-term investments, those that are under an umbrella because you can't pull those out until retirement and you might have more tax implications if you were to pull them out. So that might be one way that you break out your investments as well. Now, now also just realize that there's other software that you might look at that can track financial investments. Uh, like I think there's a, you know, like a personal capital has a software, I think which might be, I think they changed names or something, but uh, but some software can pull in the ending balances from the financial institution. So you might say, hey, look, I'm connected to the bank. Why doesn't my balance sheet here show me what is exactly in my bank account? You might have your checking account not match out to what's in your bank account. You might say, hey, look, why can't I connect to my financial institutions in the same way and show my balance sheet balance as it shows on my statements? And that's because accounting software such as Xero is not designed to do that. The accounting software is designed to look at the detail, the transactions to reconcile to the bank. If it just pulled in the ending balance from the financial institution, it would give you an income statement, but not an, I would give you a balance sheet, but not an income statement. We wouldn't have the detail. So you could work your investments in alignment with other software software that can pull in just the balance sheet information the ending balance where you stand at any particular time that's not what zero accounting software uh, is designed to do you have to make adjustments to it okay so that said you if you have dividends and interest as you accumulate the dividends and interests if you're taking dividends and interest in income your checking account will go up and you can record dividend and interest income on the income statement as that happens on a cash-based system like you normally would. However, if you're getting dividends and interests and they're rolling that back into the investment, then you want it, then when you get the dividends and interest, you, you're not gonna hit the checking account, right? So it's gonna be coming back into your investment account. So you'd have to record, you know, dividends and interest and then an increase to your investment account because that money had been earned and then put back in as though they gave you the money and then you invested it again in the in the stocks and bonds right and then you're going to have capital gains or losses and those are not going to be realized until you sell the stock so for example if this stock goes up in value to 12,250 I might adjust for that periodically when I have my bank statements, I might say, hey, look, I'm going to report this at the current value, 12,250, not 12,000. This is what I invested, but then it went up in value. Why would I do that? Even though I haven't sold the stock when I don't do that for things like fixed assets, because the stocks and bonds are traded on the stock exchange. And it's similar to currency in that you have standardized units of stock and therefore we know exactly what the price is because other stock is trading for that price at that time. So although it will fluctuate over time, at least I have a pretty good idea of what the value is. Unlike fixed assets, property, plants, and equipment, where every fixed asset is unique. Every car is unique. Every building is unique. So you can't just sell your car like that, like if snap the fingers for the same amount as a similar model because your car is different than the other model, even if it was made, you know, so unlike stocks, which are all the same. So there, there's an argument for adjusting the value of the stock, but the problem is if I increase the value of the stock, then where does the other side go? If I have not yet realized it, I'm gonna have to increase this with a journal entry. It's not gonna go through the checking account. I'll do it periodically. The other side could go to a liability account, I mean, an equity account, 
but normally people just put it on the income statement as other gains and losses which if you did you probably want it like at the bottom possibly as other income so that you can see income from normal operations as well as the income that's not from normal operations from things like unrealized gains okay that said we're going to imagine that we're actually going to sell this uh this uh, investment now and get the cash for it as though we're going to use the cash then to purchase more inventory and fixed assets but when we sell it the price went up and we're going to sell it for 12,250 so we would see the 12,250 if using bank feeds hit the checking account when we sell it if we did an electronic transfer but we would have to then an electronic transaction we would have to then uh, record two accounts and this needs to go back down to zero we don't want it to be a negative 250 right and then the and then the 250 would be a gain which we're going to report on the income statement all right let's see how it would work we can do this with a deposit form a, a, a money in form so i'm going to say this is a receive money form and we're going to say it's going into the checking account and let's check out check it out so let's say it comes from we'll just say vanguard let's say that's who we uh, are getting the money from let's say it happened on the date of 2 2 so i'm going to say uh Jan feb feb 2 and then we're going to say description sale of short term investments something like that and we're going to sell we're going to say 12,000 is going to decrease the the short term investment account and then the other side is gonna is we're also gonna have 250 to make the full amount because we're gonna get a deposit for 12,250 and this is gonna go into we're gonna make an income account un, unrealized or realized uh, gains and losses so we'll say gains and losses now we're not gonna have this is our income accounts thus far they don't have anything for uh, uncategorized other income so i'll make another income account so let's see down here we've got then the expenses and they do have realized currency gains that's interesting but i'm going to put it into other uh other income which i'll name down here as let's say 8300 i'm trying to find a number that will work let's say uh eight three zero zero i'm going to say on the income side of things it's going to be i'm not going to put it into normal sales or revenue i'm going to put it into other income which normally will be at the bottom of the income statement so i can break it out as opposed to the normal income at the top and we'll see what that looks like in a second let's save it we'll check it out uh i need a name that would be good Let's say gains on sale of investment investments. Okay, okay, my finger's not working. They're in the wrong spaces. All right, let's save it. All right, so there. So what's this gonna do? It's gonna decrease the checking account by the full. I mean, I'm sorry, increase the checking account by the full twelve thousand. 260.250 it's going to decrease the short-term investment down to zero and then the gain is going to go on the income statement but the bottom of the income statement for the uh for the 250 so let's save it and check out and see if that is indeed uh what happens so let's go on over and say update the balance sheet and go into the checking account to check out the checking check it check it check it out we're gonna go down and say we have the there it is 12,262 uh is that the one 12,262 it is but it recorded sales tax hold on a second I'm gonna go into this let's drill down on this thing uh I didn't want any sales tax options let's edit the transactions and uh edit por favor and say why did it do a sales tax i must have hit that on accident no sales tax 
and then update update now i'm gonna have to open my balance sheet back up again because i messed it up so let me open up the balance sheet and then change the range the home on my range needs a change because it's it's leaking the roof is leaking on my home on the range to change okay so there we have it and then uh so we then recorded that then the other side the uh investment is gone now it's because it went down to zero so we don't have the short-term investment and then on the income statement if i go to the income statement and up to date it up to date it and then i go down we have the gains and losses in the other income so notice we put it down here as opposed to the income line item up top because the idea being it's not part of our normal income this is not what we normally do uh, we're not in the business of selling uh, buying and selling stocks we're in the business of selling guitars and doing guitar lessons and so we're going to put it as an kind of an more of an unusual thing at the bottom so we've got net income from normal operations then which would be here and then we've got the other kind of more unusual transactions that we broke out separately so we can get to this net income first and then see that that difference down here and so that's the rationale for putting the gains and losses down below now this gain and loss note that we actually realized the gain and loss here whereas uh if you were recording gains and losses periodically that are unrealized in alignment with just the the financial statements then then you might record unrealized you know it'd be unrealized gains and losses that you might put down here in a similar fashion all right let's open up our trial balance and see where we stand at this point in time so i'm going to go back up top go into the accounting drop down let's go into our reports and type in trusty trial balance trial balance the balance is on trial changing the date range with the drop down custom date range 2023 the end of it we're going to update if your numbers tie out to our numbers that is great if not try changing the date range if your numbers were on last time at the end of the last presentation but they're off this time you would think the things that were changed would have been either the checking account because we did something to that we uh, decreased the investment account which is gone completely at this point in time because we took it down to zero and we had a change to the account down here of gains on sale of investment this one being a little bit confusing when you look at the income statement because it kind of grouped them up here uh, where the income side of things are instead of down below uh, be, because it's an other current uh an other income account as we saw it on the income statement so don't let that throw you off so there we have it if something is off you can try to uh, drill down on the number that is off if it's a date issue go to the source document and see if you can change the date to what it should be